How many of us have tried self-improvement or self-development? How many of us have faced rejection? And how many of us have sought revenge? No? Many of us have thought about revenge, whether we admit it or not. We both know the truth. <laughs> Sometimes we post a revenge picture on social media. Others smash windshields. And others smash a hole in all four tires. All of these could quickly turn into a Carrie Underwood song. <laughs> but those types of revenge usually don't work out. Why? Because they're not exactly legal. Therefore, we can't, or shouldn't, do them. So what is a way to get revenge legally? By the end of this talk, you will learn three methods of how to get revenge legally. <laughs> Let me take you back to how I discovered these three methods. When I was 11, my mom was diagnosed with stage four advanced colon cancer and given as little as a month to live. That year was the recession of 2008, and my father's small business started to meet its demise. It put us in a very rough spot financially. I closed myself off from everything and everyone. I, my mom was dying, and we couldn't afford much in those years. Instead of sulking and wanting to get revenge at the world, I rechanneled that negative energy. I danced four days a week, helped teach on Saturday mornings, I took all AP honors classes, I joined 10 clubs, student council, and I played two sports. While this may seem like avoidance, it helped me to move on and just basically to stop dwelling. I was too busy to dwell on anything. I only had time to accept what had happened and channel all that negativity into positivity. I had 16 family members pass away in a single year between my junior and senior years at high school. The end of my senior year was when I started my first relationship. He could make me laugh, something I hadn't been able to do in years. That was when I entered into an abusive relationship. I never pictured myself as someone who would be in an abusive relationship. I never viewed myself as weak, and I never had any major insecurities. It lasted for over a year. One night, when I was nearly unconscious on the pavement and still defending myself, he asked me, how the hell are you so strong? After I stopped blaming myself as the victim for creating the situation, I started blaming him. Soon, all my energy was on how much I couldn't stand him and how my life would be better if he never came into my life. One day, I came up with this idea to start an organization for young girls. I geared up all my bottled up energy into that new project. I soon no longer had time to focus on him and I focused, and I healed over time. I would have never even thought about starting this type of organization without that experience. Eventually, I looked back and I realized I needed that pivotal moment. Of course, no one should ever be in that type of situation, but by taking a negative story I was constantly telling myself, I turned it into a strength and an asset for my future. I was not attracting negative energy. I was not blaming myself or him or living in the past. Some of my high school friends blame me for acting like the victim. I posted the infamous revenge post to show them that I had full control on my life. I remember thinking to myself, they are going to see me everywhere. And heck, they're not just going to see me, they're going to hear me too. A few months later, I launched my first podcast. In its first year, it had 5,000 downloads in 13 countries, three continents, and was rated five stars. I learned so much about social media visibility I eventually became a social media consultant and created an online business. How's that for the revenge post? Unfortunately, this wasn't the end of my vengeance. <laughs> Last year, I had one of the worst days of my personal and professional life, and it was all over social media. It was my senior year of college, and I was in charge of one of the largest events of the year. I had been working over 20-hour days and completely exhausted myself. It took a toll on my health and my relationships. I had nearly a 1,000 people depending on me. A few details slipped past me, and I failed. That night, I had an argument with a guy I was dating that blew to epic proportions. Unfortunately, it was only a matter of hours before hundreds of people were talking about both events. A few days later, it was in the paper and online. 
I was completely discouraged and wanted to give up everything, all my projects, work, goals, ambitions, all of it. I was publicly humiliated. I was angry and I was looking to place blame at myself, him, the committee planning the event, everyone involved. I remember asking him, do you know who I am? Not in a way that was egotistical, but in a way that reminded us both who I was as a person. I told him, and mostly, more importantly, myself, I'm about to get really, really good. Of course, he had no clue what that meant, but I did. Nearly a year out of that, I have written my first book, graduated college, launched a professional YouTube channel, became New Hampshire's Woman of the Year 2019, and today I gave a TEDx talk. The worst day of my life is now just a quick blurb compared to the amount of time I've spent improving myself. Now, this isn't about doing things because of other people. This is about using your pain and discomfort to improve yourself, to get out of your negative thinking patterns. By keeping busy and improving yourself, instantly, you have won. Without these hardships, certain things in our lives would have never came to be, and we can heal through regearing our time and energy. The Social Cognitive and Effective Neuroscience Journal published a study in 20, 2018 called the Neural Mechanisms of Rejection. In the study, the researchers looked at how the brain reacts with both rejection and revenge. When revenge was sought, the reward sector of the brain lit up. Meanwhile, when it was not sought, the subject continued to replay the brain activity that was monitored during the rejection. The conclusion of the study was summed up like this. We fatigued our brain's inhibitory abilities during rejection, resulting in, un resulting in a reward response during revenge. When we face rejection or hardship, our entire body chemistry changes in order to help our survival. We look for rewards in our environment. In these moments and situations, these, our bodies become blurry and we are not able to evaluate through self-awareness. I'm no stranger to this phenomenon, and according to human biology, neither are you. Our bodies interpret emotional pain as physical pain. The human body looks to protect itself and looks to destroy any outside force that threatens it. This is why people look to or even toy with the idea of revenge to solve their pain. It has little to do with their character, but everything to do with their brain's chemistry and their body's survival mechanisms. We look for what was the cause of our pain. Typically, it falls back to the person who abused us, the boss who fired us, the person who broke our heart. You get the picture. And no, we don't think the purest thoughts and the peak of these moments. Letting go at times feels like an unachievable feat, even with mental health care. There are three methods today that I've used to overcome revenge, and I've used these tools to propel both my personal and professional development forward over the past few years while dealing with life's adversities. Number one, think of revenge as self-improvement. The word revenge has such a negative connotation to it. It's a very taboo subject, yet is one that crosses nearly everyone's mind at some point or another in their lives. If we take this word and view it as a method of self-improvement and forgiveness, it becomes much more relevant as a way to move forward every day. Revenge is not a word to hurt another human being, but a word to make ourselves better. The best revenge is success, Frank Sinatra. And it truly is because it allows us to drastically impact and change our lives and the lives of those around us. Number two, be uncomfortable. Without my negative experiences, I would have never ha had a comfortable college experience. And I would have never left my comfort zone to do something outside of the college norm. No one ever becomes great at something by leaving their comfort zone. I wanna make it clear that I'm not saying enter an abusive relationship. I'm saying use your negative story or situation and use it as fuel to leave your comfort zone. Everything worth achieving is uncomfortable. It is scary and it is not fun. We would never attempt these feats if we were comfortable with our weight, career, relationships, society, finances. By experiencing something uncomfortable, we are more used to becoming uncomfortable. And we are more aware we are able to get through the next obstacle. Revenge, by definition, to inflict hurt or harm on someone for an injury or wrong done to someone. What if that emotions were geared towards your inner self or your older self? What if we look to destroy our older selves to make room for our new and improved selves? What if that hurt and pain was actually something to accomplish 
to propel ourselves forward. When we are uncomfortable, we are able to accomplish so much more than we would inside our comfort zones. We are able to refocus our positive energy on ourselves rather than the negative energy on someone else. Over time, our brain chemistry returns to normal. Our brain chemistry returns to normal. We have all heard that it takes time to heal. By taking on new challenges, that time is filled up. Not only does it fill up that time, but by taking on a new challenge, it creates new emotions. The new emotions replace the old ones. Misfortunate situations are inevitable. We all have them, and we will all face them. That's the price to pay for becoming a human being. Don't be angry at these situations, but be thankful for them. They are the cause of change. If we were comfortable with every single situation, we would never change our behavior. We would all be on the same playing field, and no one would be successful. This brings me to point number three. Unfortunate situations are a mental advantage, not an external disadvantage. If we go back to the study, we can use our revenge to trigger our reward mechanism. When we start a new project or goal, we can move forward. We have all given up on a New Year's resolution once, at least not 10 times, give or take. We are more likely to achieve them. We will enjoy the next obstacle because our reward mechanism is in overdrive. I'm not the only one who has used this method as self-improvement, and many of the people we idolize every day have used these methods as well. Without this situation, some of the most amazing people may have never had enough ambition to achieve what they had. Discomfort and pain creates relentless drive and innovation. When we let misfortunate situations take over, we are destined for self-destruction. We cannot achieve our own dreams and goals because we are so fixed on the past. It's okay to look at the past as long as it can be used to push you forward. If you are going through something, embrace the challenge. And if you are seeking revenge, take on a new challenge. It will be a great opportunity for your growth and development, no matter how frustrated you may be. Remember Bahad Sami. The best part about using revenge as success means no 25 to life. Thank you.